as Mark Samwell fell asleep. Outside burglars prowled the streets of his neighbourhood, looking for iron cars to steal. They would later take his car and his life in the most horrific way. The killers would escape the scene, carry on with their lives and pretend nothing had happened. That Saturday night, April the 22nd, 2017, was in the middle of a spike in burglaries across Greater Manchester. Targeted house breakings in which thieves broke into homes purely to get their hands on keys to vehicles that were parked outside. At the time, to quote the police, they were getting hammered by such crimes, with organised crime gangs targeting German marks like Audis, BMWs and Volkswagen. Mike Samuel owned a £35,000 high-performance Audi S3. He was a 35-year-old nuclear engineer. He and his wife Jessica had been out in Manchester for lunch that day. Later at home in Cranbourne Road in Chalton. The couple had Domino's pizza for dinner, then drank a gin and tonic and watched The Secret Life of Pets in bed. The hours of Sunday morning, Ryan Rowley Gibbons and his gang discussed stealing the Audi S3. Prolific thief Gibbons, who was 29 years old, had left his flat in Edgerton Road South, Chalton, at 9.30pm. He'd spent the evening sniffing cocaine and would claim he came across his three partners in crime by chance while on his way to buy cannabis on the Nell Lane estate. Two of the three accomplices have not yet been brought to justice. The third was 21-year-old Raymond, known as Ray Ray Davies. At some point, Gibbons suggested a nice car to steal, having sighted Mike Samwell's car parked behind his house earlier. Men like Gibbons and Davies, who reached Mike Samwell's home at 3am, had been accustomed to thinking of such burglaries as easy money. Mike Samwell's car would be one of the four stolen that day in Greater Manchester, and the 209th taken in 2017. The plan was simple, break a window to the house, snatch the keys, drive off in the car and sell it on the black market. They expect to get about £2,000 for it. Davies parked his BMW a short distance away from Samwell's house and one of the four men got out to check if the Audi was still parked on the drive behind the house. And he was. This unnamed burglar returned to report back to the rest of the gang. He returned to the house a second time to smash the rear patio window, but this failed. Gibbons, according to his own evidence, then handed the man another rock. When he returned to the BMW this time, it had worked. The man returned with the car keys he had found in the kitchen and handed them to Gibbons, whose task now was to take the Audi. Mike, did you hear that? Jessica Samuel said to her husband, whacking him with a shove. She'd been roused first by the sound of the bins being moved from outside the house, just before the crash of glass as the patio windows went in. Wearing only his underwear, Mike Samuel shot out of bed and down the stairs. After 12 years in the Navy, including that as a weapons officer on board a tax submarine, he wasn't easily rattled. As the homeowner approached, Gibbons went to the back of the home and got into the Audi. Gibbons threw his cigarette he'd been smoking out the window of the car. He tried to manoeuvre the car forwards and then round a right-hand corner onto the communal driveway between the Samwell's home and the neighbouring property. They were about to get away when Mr Samwell ran outside. Get out of the car now, the homeowner shouted in the seconds before the powerful one and a half ton Audi reversed straight into him. A skin mark was found on the driver's door, suggested the car had struck Mr. Samwell a glancing blow as Gibbons tried to drive away. But the car failed to take the tight right hand turn and crashed into a railing. It reversed into Mr. Samwell, who is said to have remained between the front and rear wheels for about five seconds before the wheels of the Audi began to screech and it lurched forwards. He dragged Mr. Samuel a short distance under the vehicle. I just knew something had gone under the wheels, Gibbons would later tell the jury. It happened so quick. 
I heard a woman screaming. The scream was not normal screaming. I just knew something had happened. The screams came from Jessica Samwell. She had followed her husband downstairs with a mobile in hand, trying to get through to the police. She crawled through the smashed hole in the patio door and stood on the decking. From there, she met with the awful sight of her husband pinned down by his own car. As the car sped off, she made her way to her husband screaming for help as he bled from the back of his head. As he lay dying, she held his hand and told him she loved him. Details she revealed in a wrenching police video interview, which was played during the trial. Sobbing, she told the police he had tire marks across his chest and there was blood coming from the back of his head. I was ringing the police and he was making an awful noise. I shouted, help, help, somebody help me. I was just telling him that I loved him as I held his hand. The Audi was seen at high speed heading away from Cranbourne Road, nearly smashing into another car as it hurled across one junction. Gibbons dumped the Audi and went home then to smoke a joint. Mike Samuel was taken to hospital, but there was little they could do. He had suffered dozens of injuries, crushed to death under his own car, outside his own home. When Ray Ray Davis arrived home at 4am, an hour after the tragedy, he was shaking and looked pale. He told his concerned girlfriend to F off. He was picked up by police within 24 hours of the crime and was rearrested a month later, refusing to answer questions on both occasions. The police investigation soon led detectives to Gibbons. Four days after Mike Samuel was fatally injured, Gibbons was arrested at Glen Rose Fife, where he was working away laying concrete flooring. As police cautioned him, the cocksure thief replied, Murder? You mean suspicion of murder, don't you? The half-smoked cigarette he had carefully thrown on the floor as he got into Mike Samwell's Audi had linked him to the scene by his DNA. His DNA was also found on the steering wheel of the stolen Audi. Givens had little choice to admit guilt, after he had been charged and his trial approached, he admitted he was at the wheel of the Audi as he ran over Mr. Samwell. Gibbons, 29 years old, would later claim that he didn't know he had driven over Mr. Samwell twice as he tried to speed away in his Audi. This, according to the prosecution, was a lie. The Crown argued that Gibbons realised he reversed over someone and must have seen the victim between the rear and front wheels before driving forwards and over him for a second time as he sped away from the scene. Scientists found skin scrape marks down inside the Audi, indicating some of Mr. Samwell's body was sticking out from under the vehicle. Giving unapologetic evidence, Gibbons told the jury he'd only learned about the death the following day on the news, prompting him to go to the pub and to act normal. Gibbons earned £600 a week working for a concrete flooring business and claimed he did not even need the money. He refused to name the two other burglars who had been involved with him and Davies. Eventually conceded what had happened was obviously his fault, but denied murder and manslaughter, admitting only burglary and aggravated vehicle taking. But the jury convicted him guilty of murder. His girlfriend Stacey Hughes was cleared of assisting an offender. Passing sentence, Mr Justice William Davis told Gibbons he was killed in front of her eyes and died as she was holding his hand on the driveway of his own home. You are a dangerous young man. You are a regular burglar. On this occasion, to get what you wanted, you quite ruthlessly killed a man. Gibbons was sentenced to serve a minimum term of 27 years. It turns out Gibbons has convictions going back 10 years. He was jailed for 18 months for burglary in 2013 and was sentenced to 12 months in prison for attempted burglary in February 2015. Unlike Gibbons, the man beside him in the dock, Raymond Davies, who was 21 years old, of Castleford Walk in Manchester, appeared to have been affected by the events that night. Although he too insisted that he didn't realise, like Samuel, who referred to merely as the man, had suffered fatal injuries that night 
and took care not to mention the other two members of the team. Raymond Davis was convicted of manslaughter, was jailed for eight years. He showed no reaction as he was led away by dock officers. Mr. Samuel's car was a 209th taken in similar circumstances in 2017. The other two members of the burglary gang have never been caught. The family of Mike Samuel paid tribute to him. There is enough time and definitely not enough words to express how proud we are of Mike. We can't even begin to explain how much Mike will be missed. To us, he was and forever will be our hero. <laughs>